بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم So we left off on greater sins last week um, we were speaking about a hadith about working with oppressors or not working with oppressors and um one person he came to uh, he went to meet Imam Qadim alayhi salam and the Imam asked him if he was employed with the government he said yes so the Imam asked him why he said i am benev- benevolent and help the needy people so i cannot leave this job apart from this i also have a family and children and i have no other means of livelihood the imam said o ziyad if i am taken to the top of a high mountain and thrown from it and my body is shattered to pieces i would prefer that than to do some job for these people or even step inside of their threshold except for one condition so the one condition he, the imam says do you know what that is he said may my life be sacrificed for you i don't know imam continued except that i rescue the believers from grief and heart or and hardships or liberate an imprisoned believer or repay the debts of a believer after this the imam went on to say ya ziyad if you are employed under a tyrant then work for the betterment of your believing brothers so that it will recompense for the sins that you may have uh you may happen to commit during the time of your service in the uh this government Another companion came to uh, Imam Qadim alayhi salam, uh, Father Ibn Abdul Rahman. He said, please permit me to work in a government position. The Imam says, you are permitted, provided that you don't change any of my religious commands or cross the limits laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The compensation of your action will be fulfilling the needs of your believing brother. Ali ibn Yaqtin he was the prime minister of uh, the caliph uh, Harun al-Abbasi he wrote to Imam Qadim alayhi salam and he said please give me the permission to resign from this post he didn't want to work there anymore imam said i do not consider it permissible for you to leave this government position because the courts uh because in the courts of the tyrants there are people through whom Allah removes the difficulties of his loved ones and they are the ones whom Allah has made immune from the fire hence Allah will respect uh, Allah he said hence uh fear Allah with respect to your brothers in faith so we see that some people are in these positions and they are able to help and they are able to do good for the community and uh warn them and help them and keep them safe and uh, make things easier for the followers of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi wasallam then this permissible for these people with that intention um uh, the next person Muhammad ibn Ismail uh, Bazi was a minister in the court of Harun he had the honor of meeting three imams he met Imam Qadim Imam Rida Imam Jawad alayhi wasallam and uh Imam Jawad even gave him his own uh garment to use as a kafan so he relates from Imam Rida alayhi salam that he said there are people in the courts of the tyrants through whom Allah manifests his proof and they are perform- uh, appointed in specific cities Allah removes the difficulties of his loved ones through them and by them he brings about the welfare of the muslims the believers take refuge with them in calamities the needs of our needy shia are fulfilled through these very people and allah almighty through their means imposes the fear and dread of the believers upon the house of the oppressors these are the true believers uh, who are the trust bearers of allah on this earth congratulations to them for the for this uh, for their position and their post the imam said wouldn't it be better that at least one of you reaches this position Muhammad said may my life be sacrificed for you how can a person reach that position Imam replied being with the tyrants he makes the heart of our shias happy that makes us happy o muhammad after you do this you will be considered among the people who have lofty positions so 
being in that position, suffering through those things, uh, you know, that being around the tyrants, but in that position, they are able to make the hearts of the Shia happy by helping them and safeguarding them, then this makes Ahlul Bayt happy. At times, it becomes wajib to accept the rulership, uh, you know, accept a position in the government. A person should do that only when he is sure that uh, if he takes this position, he is able to uh, remove a great harm or an evil or to prevent uh, one sinful thing or sinful ritual or in this system. So he can remove something or prevent something, which is bad. But such situation, the author says, is very rare because it depends on the person's confidence, what he thinks he can do. And after one takes this position, uh, one will never, he has to uh, never commit any sort of injustice or sinful act. Uh, he shouldn't go against justice and the divine commands. And it's obvious that such a proposition is very difficult to achieve because there's a lot of dangers and hidden things that lurk behind these positions in government. And it's very difficult to save oneself from committing these uh, wrong actions or this oppression. Imam Sadiq he replied to the letter of Abdullah Najashi, who was the ruler of Ahwaz. He says, it's come to my knowledge that you assume the rulership of Ahwaz. I am happy by this news and also sad. Because uh, I am happy because I hope Allah will remove the difficulties and the problems of the Ahlul Bayt and help them through you. And through you, the fire of opposition will cool down on the followers of Ahlul Bayt. And also, I am sad on account of the fears, the least of which is that you may cause, uh, become a cause of injury or difficulty to our followers and thus be deprived of even the fragrance of Jannah. So if you get in that government position and you, uh, this person, you know, they cause problems for the uh, followers of Ahlul Bayt, they won't even smell the scent of Jannah. <clears throat> Imam says, uh, if a person has authority, uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, uh, actually there's narration before this from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, it says, one who assumes the leadership of a community will be raised on the day of resurrection in a way that both hands will be tied to his neck. Then if he had dealt with the people according to the divine law, Allah will free him. But if he has been unjust, he will be thrown into the hellfire. And what an evil resort it is. If a leader of a community does not deal with justice and goodness with the people, for each day that he ruled, he will be made to stand at the boundary of the hellfire for 1,000 years with both his hands tied behind his neck. Thus, if he has dealt with justice, he will be freed, and if not, he will be thrown into the hellfire, into a depth of 70,000 years. So it shows the, you know, severity of these positions and that they have to deal with people justly, because if they don't, the, the punishment that awaits them is very severe. Imam Sadiq salam, says, if a person has authority in a particular affair of the people and he deals with, with justice with them and the doors of his house are open for those who refer to him and seek his help and he doesn't remain away from the people, then Allah Almighty will keep him safe from the dread and fear on the day of resurrection and make him enter the paradise. We see this in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, when he used to sit with people, open the door for people to come, deal with people uh, on a regular basis, go to the markets and interact with people. And he didn't stay away from the people and hide away and the people would never see him. So he said, the author, he says about helping the oppressors in other matters. He said, helping the oppressors or the tyrants in matters other than oppression like to work as their personal assistant, to stitch clothes for them, to build their house, to guard their property. All these types of jobs can be classified into three categories. In some cases, these jobs indirectly help in oppression. For example, if the tyrant had taken a piece of land and orders a brick mason to build a house on it, 
or a cloth which has been obtained by force is given to a tailor to stitch this uh, cloth. Or a person may be ordered to guard the money that was taken from others unjustly. There is no doubt that all of these type of job are haram. Because the use of things acquired illegally is haram. For the one who has taken them or for, for anyone who is aware that these things belong to someone else. Secondly, the second category is of the jobs that which are not direct acts of oppression or which don't help in oppressing other people, but since the one who is involved in them is associated with the tyrants and the common people consider him to be a part of that uh, oppressive system, it is also haram. His presence may encourage the tyrants. Consequently, his name is also included in the list of oppressors. He is also count, counted among those who have taken other people's rights. All of these are haram according to various traditions, numerous traditions. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, one who has his name registered in the office of Bani Abbas will be raised on day of resurrection in the form of a pig. Another tradition he brings is uh, that such a person will be brought in the form of uh, of a pig as other narrations saying is similar the imam also said do not help the oppressors in the construction of masajid or mosques uh, these are people who are with the oppressors if it wasn't for them uh, supporting them or being with them they would have felt alone and they wouldn't have been so bold to continue oppressing we have narration from uh, Ibn Abi Ya'far who says that I was in the company of Imam Sadiq salam, when one of the Shia came to speak to the Imam. He said, may our life be sacrificed for you. Some of our people have problems in, in getting their uh, sustenance, their daily livelihood, whereas there are vacancies in the uh, government of Bani Abbas for construction of buildings, digging canals. What is your opinion regarding this? Imam said, I do not like to even tie a knot or, uh, or the mouth of a water bag or the strap of a uh, purse for them, even if they were to pay me with Medina and whatever is in it. I don't like to help them even if it is the little, uh, little as the ink at the tip of a pen. Without any doubt, the oppressors will remain standing at the verge of the hellfire to the time that Allah decides about all the other people. This is in the words of the Imam. He doesn't want to help them even with the tip of the pen. Yes, some ink on the tip of a pen. Muhammad ibn uh, Azafar says that Imam Sadiq salam, told his father, I have come to know that you deal with Abu Ayyub and Abu Rabi. Then what would be your condition when your name will appear in the list of the tyrants? Hearing his, this command, the father became sad. When the imam saw his restlessness, he said, I have only warned you about which Allah has warned me. The narrator says, my father remained sorrowful for the rest of his life. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, it is wajib upon Allah to raise you on the day of resurrection with the same group from which you derive benefits in this world. So we should cling to Ahlul Bayt salam, and inshallah we will be raised with Ahlul Bayt and not cling to the tyrants and the oppressive governments and these things in search for dunya. I Imam also mentioned the incidents where some of the followers of Musa salam, decided to support Fir'aun uh, for ch chasing after dunya and they secretly planned to change sides. When Musa was about to win, they came to be supporters of Musa. But it so happened that when Fir'aun and his soldiers were about to be drowned and these people tried to cross to join Musa's side, Allah caused their horses to uh, perish and they also drowned with Fir'aun and his army. So they were really with Fir'aun, but they were, uh, you know, we say like flip-flop, whichever side is winning, they're going to go to that side. So their intention was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but is only for whoever wins and for dunya. That's all they care about. Imam gave the advice for us. He said, fear Allah and strengthen your faith with an uncomparable taqiyya 
and avoid presenting your needs to the ruler. And if a person is respectful to an uh, irreligious man, Allah will degrade him and will consider him his enemy and leave him on his own. SubhanAllah. To be respectful, uh, meaning uh, you respect someone who cares nothing about deen in a way that you are agreeing with what he is doing and you are encouraging what he is doing. He says, uh, I don't care about Salat, I don't care about uh, fasting, I don't care about Hajj. Uh, and you're like, okay, what, what, whatever, you know, I still you, uh, respect you and I still your friend and that's okay, you don't have to do those things, you know, for me to be your friend. Uh, something like this, respecting an irreligious man. Uh, Allah will degrade that person who does that and consider him his enemy and will leave him on his own. And if he receives any monetary benefit from that man, Allah will remove the barakat from that money. So there is no barakat in money from this uh, person. And if he uses this money to perform hajj or free slaves or any other good deed, then he will not get any reward for that action. Ali ibn Abi Hamza says, One of my friends was a scribe in the um, government of Bani Umayyah. One day he asked me to take him to Imam Sadiq. I took him to the Imam. He gave him salam and he said, May my life be sacrificed for you. I have been working for Bani Umayyah as a scribe and I have earned a huge amount of money and I didn't give any thought to halal or haram. I'm just making money. The Imam said, if people like this had not been in the service of Bani Umayyah to write letters for them, to collect money for them, to fight their enemies, to attend their assemblies, they, Bani Umayyah, they would not have taken our rights. And if they had been left alone, they would have not been able to take the money, uh, more money than what they had. When these people are with them, joining in the meetings and doing these things, it, it shows uh, that they are powerful and they have strength and they have numbers and they have support. But if no one goes, no one supports them, then, you know, they are look like they are all alone and they don't get the courage to go forward. The man said, may my life be sacrificed for you. Can I attain salvation after what I have done? The Imam said, separate whatever wealth you have earned from them and try to return it to the rightful owners. If you know them, whatever you cannot deliver should be given as sadaqah on their behalf so that I, that I can guarantee that Allah will give, send you to paradise. On hearing this, the young man bowed his head thoughtfully for some time. What would people do in this situation? They have earned all of their money haram. Imam says, give all of your money back to those people and the rest you don't know, give it away in sadaqah. Everything they have in order to be forgiven, they have to give everything away and start from zero, from scratch. It's very difficult to do. Would someone do that? Would someone willingly be like, okay, I want to go to Jannah, so I'll do it. Or would they cling on to their money? What would we do in this situation? Would we listen to the imam or would we say, you know, I got a lot of money in my bank account and nice car and nice house and I don't want to give that up and I would, I'll just uh, hold on to it. So he raised his head and he said, may I be sacrificed for you? I will do as you have ordered. After this, he accompanied this companion to Kufa. He returned all of the, his wealth to the rightful owners as much as he could. The rest he gave away as sadaqa. He even gave away the clothes that he was wearing. He said, I got some money and I bought for him uh, you know, new clothes and gave him some money for his expenses so he could start over. And after some months, he, uh, he fell ill and I paid him a visit. I found that he was very serious condition. He opened his eyes. He's in the throes of death. And he tells me, Ali ibn Abi Hamza, Wallahi, your Imam has fulfilled his promise. Then he died. Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un. He says, I supervised his uh, janazah. I returned to Medina to meet Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And the Imam says, Ya Ali, I have fulfilled my promise to your friend. He said, May I be sacrificed for you? You speak the truth because my companion just testified. My friend just said, 
that uh, you have fulfilled the promise at the time of his death, subhanAllah. Inshallah, the Imams will be there to uh, uh, intercede for us on our deathbed. The third type of uh, assistance is the, uh, it says the third type of help is that which is not objectionable in any way an encouragement to the oppressor, nor can it be considered a help to the oppressor in the general sense. For example, to hire vehicles to carry the load of permissible goods and uh, food and these things. All of these type of actions are not totally haram. But some elders have mentioned that on the basis of precaution, it is necessary to avoid even these actions. Uh, the author says, as we have stated earlier, by involving oneself in such matters, one is prone to incline towards those oppressors. So, inshallah, we'll, we will stop here and uh, continue in the next class. Salaam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum.